and down the country, historic buildings rot and decay. Many of them are listed, and although that saves them from demolition, often they face a slow decline. One foot in the past, in ruins. These elaborate gates provide the last defence for Scotland's most spectacular industrial palace. Built in 1905, the Argyll Motor Works in Alexandria, just 20 miles from Glasgow, had the highest production of cars in Europe, and in 1913, the Argyll car won the world record at Brooklands. Built of red sandstone and marble, the neoclassical frontage is crowned by a copper-covered dome. Hand-wrought carvings depict an Argyll car surrounded by an heroic flourish of workers and angels. First World War, it was taken over by the Ministry of Munitions, becoming a torpedo factory in the 1930s, run by the Admiralty. But it closed in the late 1960s, and no new use has been found since. The building has often changed hands. All that remains today is this ruinous frontage, stretching 540 feet, with just the grand entrance hall to the original factory and front offices intact. Once extensively decorated with ball finials, it has fallen foul of vandals. Thieves have stripped copper cladding from the roof and the exceptional entrance hall has been robbed of its marble staircase. The land at the rear was sold to Wimpy Homes and now a major housing development is being built in the shadow of its walls. But local people would still like to see what remains of the Argyll Motor Works converted into residential or light industrial use. It could even be a car museum. Inquiries should be addressed to the agents. Languishing in the old manor of Doddington at Whitchurch in Shropshire is this fine Greek revival church of St. Catherine. It was built in 1836 by the Countess of Bridgewater as a chapel of ease to house the overflow from the parish church where parishioners had to pay for the privilege of getting a seat. But after pew rents were abandoned here in 1859, parishioners gradually moved back to St. Auckland's and by the 1960s, St. Catherine's had fallen into disuse. Its distinctive bell tower stands proud and houses the oldest J.B. Joyce turret clock in the country. But inside is a scene of devastation. Only a few relics of its past survive, among them these elegant corbels and the coffered plaster's ceiling. But the scars of neglect are everywhere. The fabric has been ravaged by dry rot and vandals. The inside, as you walked in, was very light and airy, and it seemed very spacious, and very welcoming too. It wasn't all as oppressive like some of the older churches are, and it seemed to have a special atmosphere. Very upset to see it, the state of it in the inside, like I knew it before, and it was quite, quite nice inside. And uh, with all the plaster off the walls and there's no floors and all the windows broken, uh, it's quite a shock to you. But 20 years ago, the church commissioner sold it to a building contractor who hasn't been able to find backing to develop the site. I don't think it gives any beauty to the town whatsoever. I think it's got to the stage that its usefulness has gone. We've told the council that we've done everything in our power, cost-wise, plan-wise, use of the building-wise, and we now come to the stage that we want to apply for demolition on the building. This gracious neoclassical survival is an important landmark that's been reduced to a builder's store and is crying out to be rescued. 
St. Catharines is listed grade two, and the council will consider conversion to a museum, a theater, or even a snooker hall. Inquiries should be addressed to the agents in nearby Shrewsbury. In the heart of the Dorset countryside lies Shillingstone Railway Station, the last survivor of the Somerset and Dorset line. Built in the 1860s, it's a classic example of the small country station and was visited by Edward VII when he used to alight here to see friends at Irwinminster, which explains why it merited such a grand canopy. But it's been neglected, and while the platform and other railway equipment is still intact, the local Railway Preservation Trust has struggled to carry out even basic exterior painting work and the station is in urgent need of attention. Just five miles from Blandford Forum, Shillingstone Railway Station deserves a new use. The Conservation Officer at North Dorset District Council would welcome proposals. One of the most troublesome clans among the feuding families known as Border Reavers was the Lawless Graham family, who built this fine Elizabethan peel tower in 1586, a fortified house to defend the clan from sudden attack by other families near Longtown in Cumbria. Architecturally old-fashioned, it's more reminiscent of earlier castles with battlements and is built from large blocks of red sandstone. Set within the battlements is a stepped gable roof. Circular gargoyles and square heads to the windows lend it a distinctly Scottish feel. It was adapted for domestic comfort in the 1700s and a squat square porch added in the 19th century became the new entrance. Behind that doorway lies the original entrance to the tower with its stone heads now badly eroded. Inside, the defensive spiral staircase still curls up to the roof. The tower was built to last with five foot thick walls, but the dramatic signs of decay are rife. The Elizabethan fireplace is severely cracked, plasterwork has crumbled and dry rot has set in. Now the whole tower is in decline since the last residents moved out ten years ago. The farmer who owns Brackenhill Tower hasn't been able to afford the extensive repairs necessary to maintain this romantic monument to border history which is listed grade two and is keen to sell. Inquiry should be addressed to the conservation section at Carlisle City Council.